right. What about yellow? Yellow, is that the color? Hmm. I don't know about yellow. Let's see. Brown. What about brown? That's brown gonna work. Hmm. Blue, maybe blue's nice. What about blue? Oh, I, I, I don't know, man. Something's just not working. You know, I'm I'm starting to think about what color I'm gonna paint this thing. I think I mentioned that last time that it might be time to start thinking about colors for this thing. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to take a minute to kind of visualize what this is gonna look like when it's done. And you know, I mean, you know, you gotta kind of get a picture in your mind and play the movie out. And so I'm sitting here and I'm kind of imagining that the motor's running great and that fuel injection's got the headers just pure purring away and we use that twin stick thing and we're just in low range and we've got the hubs locked and we're got the top off the thing and on some trail and we're just rolling along and the wind's in my hair and everything's just great and ah, I'm just I'm just really struggling to get that movie playing in my head I just I don't know I don't know what's going on I can't seem to get it dialed in but anyway I don't know I guess we'll put this aside for now and uh, I'll get back to work on this thing and we'll talk about colors later all right All right, well, I've been down to the supply store for all Jeep projects, Home Depot, and I picked up a kind of an assortment of different sizes of these electrical clamps. You have one inch, three quarter inch, five eighths. I think those were the three sizes they had. So um, I tried the one inch just eyeballing it around the big part of the harness here, the biggest part, and it seemed a little too big. So I did a three quarter inch one, and I think that's gonna work out okay. So what my plan is, is we're gonna kinda of undo this temporary stuff, and I think we'll kinda of put a clamp here and a clamp here, and then we'll get down, as soon as we get past this part of the bundle, then we may drop down a little bit smaller size or I might go with the one inch and put all of the cables together that are part of the power or the um, fuel injection. So I think what I'll do for now is I may just kind of let the camera run and let you watch me mess around with this. It'll either be really exciting and progressive and I'll get a lot of stuff done or I'll be messing around out here for half an hour and won't get anything done and I'll just toss the video in the garbage. So <laughs> you'll be as surprised as me to see how this turns out. Let's see what happens. All right, well, um, We've hit a spot where it's time to pause for a minute and go consult the owner's manuals because I have two of these wires that are in this loom here, this chunk, are coil wires out of the painless wiring harness. And I also have coil wires out of the fuel injection system. My expectation is they'll all get hooked up, but um, we'll see, they might not if, I, if, if the coil's being driven by the fuel injection system they may tell me not to hook this one up. I may have to even talk to the Edelbrock guys or the painless wiring guys. But so far, I've got everything kind of coming together pretty decent here. I just have a couple of zip strips in place here to hold things up. Um, so I brought my main loom across here. I brought my fuel injection main part of the loom up here. I've got this clamp just hanging here right now. Again, remember this is our breather that's gonna go down into the transmission tunnel and then hook to the transmission. And what I'm gonna do right now, I did put our heater box back in here, but because the heater box is in, I can't take this fender off now because the bolts are behind the heater box. So I think what I'm gonna do is, while it's easy to get to, I'm gonna drop that heater box back out of the Jeep, 
pull this fender off. That'll let me get clear access down into here. Even if I want to take the battery box out to just reach down in there, some of the bolts for the battery box are behind the heater box as well. So it, it, it's probably time to just pop that thing out for a minute now that I know it all goes back in okay and it's all done. It's just four bolts and we can take it right back out and then I could pull this fender off and then I can really get over here. And again, I might even take my battery box out of the way and just make sure I got plenty of room to tie everything up here. So that's what I'm gonna do. First things first, I'm gonna go have a sandwich or something. And uh, while I'm feeding my face, I'm gonna read up on my owner's manuals a little bit on these two systems and make sure I don't have any questions about how we're gonna marry this stuff together and figure out what of these other cables I might wanna put in the loom and add them to this stuff going across the top and come down like this maybe. Um, or I might bring them right down over there like it kind of is now and come around. So we'll see, I haven't decided yet, um, but I'll look at that. But yeah, decent progress so far. Um, no real problems. This is the head scratching part where you kind of want to sit and think about it for a little bit. So I'm going slow and it's time to go, like I said, read the books and see what I come up with. So I'll check back with you once I make a few decisions here. All right, guys. Well, I have been upstairs diligently reading owner's manuals, the one for the painless wiring kit and the one for the fuel injection. And I'm not done with them yet, so I'm gonna go back and finish reading that. But I was kind of going back and checking out some of the comments on one of the videos that had gone up a little while ago. And uh, one of you guys had brought to my attention the fact that there's no studs on the back of this reproduction dash that match the factory mounting points for like the speakers. So there's the grill here for the speaker. And on the back, in the factory configuration, there's you know two little studs here that you use when you put your speaker on there so you can put a bolt on them to hold the speaker in place. Same thing here around where the speedometer goes. There should be you know four studs here at all four corners of that speedometer gauge so that when you're putting it through from here, you put just the ring around the front and then there's a, a kind of a tab here that's got a hole through it that goes over those studs and put a little bolt or nut on this side and hold it in place. So none of that. Obviously there are no studs anywhere on this dash. It's as smooth as a baby's butt on the back side here. So I have the old dash right here next to me and I think that the only thing I'm really concerned about is the speedometer because I really have no intention of putting speakers behind the little grill openings here for speakers. Um, the gauges look to me like they have kind of the chrome ring on the front side and they do have a little plastic ring on the back that's going to lock those in place. So I think those will be all right. And um, like I said before, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get my little lighted indicators out to go in all these kind of holes like right here and whatnot. So um, I am looking at just a new set of those. It seems like those are like 10 or 15 bucks. So I might not be worth trying to mess around getting those out of there. But I'm gonna go do a little digging on that speedometer that I was looking at. I think I put a link to that at like, I don't know, a couple of videos back or two or three or four back when I was talking about that GPS speedometer. So I'm gonna go look that thing back up and see if I can figure out if it does need, you know, to be held in place like that. I'm sure it will. So I'm sure I'll have to figure out something there. Um, I think the suggestion was made that, you know, you can put a little, put a bolt through from the front and then kind of cover it up with that plastic cover that goes around your gauges. We'll see. I'll figure it out, I'm sure. But um, for right now, you know, just because the last video was a half an hour long, um, I may just toss this one in the can and get it published up there and then um, come back when I've had a chance to really read through the manuals because I am trying to legitimately, seriously take my time and 
plan this part out because you know other than putting the engine in I think this is kind of the second most important part of this whole thing is getting all this stuff to work right the electronics so I really 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 don't want to be talking to you in a week or two from now going well I did something wrong and now I'm redoing it I just don't want to do that on this chunk so I think that's what we're going to do I'm going to throw this one up onto the internet let you have it and I'll be back when I can show you some real live putting stuff in place for good on this wiring harness and getting everything hooked up and show you you know where it's at for good just in case because I know a few of you who are watching along are doing another doing your own Jeep restorations and in some cases you're back further back in the in the process than I am so if nothing else I kind of now have that little added pressure of not screwing up your project <laughs> by having you follow me and make me do and have me do something wrong in front of you. So I'm taking my responsibility seriously. I will go finish reading that 148 page painless wiring harness book and the one for the fuel injection systems, not quite that big, but it's pretty big. I'm going to go through those study it maybe if i have to make a couple of line drawings make sure i'm sure how everything goes if i have any questions i'm going to get on the phone with either edelbrock or uh, maybe summit racing will be who i'll call but but or painless wiring they both say don't struggle call us so i plan on doing that if i'm struggling but right now i did want to come down here and look at this dash because i was looking at the comments and i was really confused like I said I had to come figure this out for myself so there's that going on um, other than that I haven't made much progress um, that you haven't seen in this video so um, like I said here we go on to the next one um, okay psych <laughs> I was gonna wrap this up and um, then I was just thinking, you know, I'm just going to go see what I can salvage off that old dash and see, tear it all apart and see what I can do. Did It turns out I was able to get those little plastic things out of there. You have to kind of start on one end, and I started on the end that I would call kind of the keyed end. When you look at the hole in the dash, you'll see what I'm talking about. There's one side that's got a little bit wider kind of notch on it. So I started on that end, just pushed the little plastic tab in with a screwdriver and while I was pushing down on that back of that thing and I wound up it takes a little work but you can press them out of there okay so there we go um, I lied I wasn't ready to publish this thing just yet but don't go far I'm I'm almost done I promise
All right, well, look at that. Managed to save every one of those little dudes. So, fan goes at the top, I believe. And then we have defroster, temperature, and um, the big vent that just lets everything blow through from the front. Got my gas gauge out of there, or my um, speedometer cluster, gas gauge, temperature gauge, all that out as a bundle. Um, we're showing 95,150 miles. I'm not sure whether or not I believe that, but there it is, just in case we have to wind up using it. I, it's pretty rusty around the edge, but that might be, no, that's chrome. I don't sure that'll clean up very good. Okay, then we had, um, I believe this was our fan switch, which seemed to be missing the knob for. And then we had wipers, our wiper switch, headlights. I know the headlight switch is around here somewhere. Here's my gauges. They don't look so bad. Uh, amp, amp meter, oil pressure. Uh, I will take these in the house because as I'm looking at that replacement cluster here, uh, the cool thing about that is you can order it with different fonts on your gauges and colors and all that and the color of your pointer and whatnot. So, given that these two look well, quite different when you look at them close. I don't know, maybe I'll, I might buy a new one or the other of these. But anyway, I'll try and match this up. So obviously we're gonna try and get it to all look good. But those are in pretty good shape. Um, and as I think I mentioned with this plastic keeper on the back, the studs missing on the back of the dash are no big deal. You saw me pull out my little button here to lock, close the door of the glove box. So that's that guy right there. Still works. Might need a little WD-40 and a little cleaning up, but it's ready to go. These were all those aftermarket switches I had in there for the electric fan and the running lights and all that. So um, yeah, our um, compilation of parts out of the dash doesn't look too bad. And now we know what we can salvage and I will not have to now go buy me a new set of these. So there's five or 10 bucks that we saved on this project. So. That's how you keep your budget in control, folks. Save yourself 10 bucks where you can. So <laughs> we'll take it where we can get it, right? We got so much in this thing now. Um, we'll take every little bit we can get. So there we go. Uh, time to get back into that thing and do fuel line and run the rest of my stuff. But first, I'm back to school reading some manuals.